Okay, so I guess we can go ahead and start. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Tan Nu. I'm with the IBM Silicon Valley Lab in California. With me is my colleague, is uh, Oli, uh, Fabio Oliveira. He's a research staff member at the IBM uh, Watson Lab in New York. And uh, Winnie Seng is also at the uh, IBM Silicon Valley Lab in California. So our talk today is on debugging full stack uh, deployment in the stack. Uh, by what we mean by full stack is that it covers both the resource and software. Right? Okay. Uh, debugging is, is a pretty uh, broad topic. So today, in the next 40 minutes, we're not, we're not going to cover everything. Right? But uh, um, the, the heat community has pretty broad knowledge in this. So if you have a difficult problem to debug, then, then the heat RIC is a pretty good place to get some help. But what we'd like to do today is to uh, uh, outline our vision in debugging heat template. We'll uh, describe uh, um, what you can do today with the tools available. And we'll show how it is being improved. And we'll show some demo. Okay. All right. So uh, I think by now we are all becoming pretty familiar with, with heat. Right? Uh, but uh, let me just spend a few seconds to kind of quickly review what heat. Uh, what, from the user perspective, uh, what you get from heat is, is a domain specific language. And with that, you can uh, write a template. You describe uh, the resource you want to do, you to create, and the software you want to, to uh, deploy and the de dependency between them. And then he will take that and basically drive the, the orchestration to create all the resource and, de and basically deploy your stuff. Right. Um, so here we highlight some of the key features uh, in heat. This is not comprehensive by any means, but just to just want to highlight a few points. So uh, besides creating the resource, heat also drives the automation for, for your VM. So it can uh, run uh, your script. It can interface with the configuration management tool like Chef and Puppet. And it can be extended to other technologies as well. The second point here is that heat uh, uh, updates stack in place. So what it means is that it, it, it drives the full life cycle of your stack. So it does more than just the, the initial provisioning. And this is a key point that sometimes is missed. Um, and then the template, you can make your template portable by parameterizing uh, the, the uh, part of your, of your template that would be different between cloud based on OpenStack. So that way you can take your template and deploy to a different cloud. Uh, and then you can customize the part of your template for the cloud. So things like network ID, image ID, and so on. Um, and you can see that uh, heat uh, uh, does a lot of work for you. It does a lot of automation, and this is all very nice. Um, the problem is that when, when something goes wrong with all that hidden automation, then it could be pretty difficult to, to get in and, and debug. Right? So what can go wrong? Well, you can get to have bug in your template. You just, you know, and, and heat does a really good job with validating the template. But still, you can uh, make some error that make your template uh, behave in a very mysterious way. Right. Uh, you could have wrong dependency in your template, and this will show up as timing error, and uh, it could fail intermittently or, or could fail in some non-deterministic way. It could be difficult, difficult to debug. Uh, you could have bug in your script, right? uh, the, so bug in the bash script, the shaft and puppet and so on, and this tends to show up when you move from image to image. Uh, you could be using your cloud resource in the, a way that doesn't work, and it could be because you, uh, although you misunderstood the, the spec on the resource, or maybe there's not enough documentation for the, the, uh, the particular resource. And the cloud itself can introduce error. Uh, you, could, you can have issue with capacity. Uh, it could be misconfigured if you have a small cloud. And it could be just transient error that happened you know, in, your, in, in your environment. Right. OK, so what you got a fail stack, and what do you do? Right. So here we outline um, a sequence of steps that a user could go through to debug your, 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 your fail stack. Um, you, you could start by looking at Horizon, then see what, you know, what your state of your stack is. Uh, here you should be able to see what resource has been successfully deployed and what resource are in error. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good uh, uh, view of where you are. Right? And, and sometimes you could get some useful uh, error message and that would, would help you. If that's not enough, then you get go to the heat command line right, and get some more information for your resource. Right. Um, 
And then what you can do is you can go to your VM, log in, and look at the log. Right? Uh, there's a lot of logs you can, you can use. Uh, if you have problem with initializing your VM, you can look at the cloud init log. If your automation on your VM is, is not running correctly, you could uh, look at the, there's a lot of logs for those like Chef and Puppet. And uh, uh, Heat also has a keep log for the, the, the activity on the software configuration. Uh, that could be useful also. Right. And then finally, you can get on the OpenStack server, look at all the, the uh, log for the different services to see how the OpenStack service services are responding to the request from Heat to create your resource. Right. So, so that would be like the, 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 the final uh, thing you can look at. Um, and then once you figure out your problem, you can recreate your stack. You can do on a run a, a stack update to, to you know, continue from where you are. And that fix your problem. Right? So the, the two observations we want to make here is that uh, uh, first the, the sequence of the, the flow here roughly corresponds to the level of complexity that a user has to deal with. And that in turn corresponds to the uh, level of expertise that you need to be able to you know, use and the information and debug. Right? The second point is that uh, uh, the flow also corresponds to, to the, the level of authorization you need to be able to get to, to, to the information. Right? So for instance, uh, on the VM, uh, to get to those logs, you probably get, need sudo privilege, and the, the cloud provider might or might not give you that privilege. Uh, to get to the OpenStack log, then certainly you need the admin level access. So based on that two observation, then you know, we have a, uh, we, we can see two group of users. Two at the top, you we have the typical cloud user, and that they would you know tend to be at the top of that spectrum, and then at the bottom of the spectrum, you would have your cloud admin, your DevOps, or, you know someone who would have a full knowledge of your stack. Right? So, uh, so so certainly the, the group at the top there, the cloud end user, is a much broader, bigger base of, uh, of user. So. So the question we, we ask is, how can we make debugging easier for that, that big group of users? Right. Well, so, uh, so here, uh, to answer that question, we, we want to outline uh, our vision for uh, building debugging tool. Right. Um, so we start at the bottom. Right. So here, at the heat engineer level, we need a, a set of low-level support to be able to, to help to debug. Right. So the first thing there is that you need uh, a pretty robust error handling with hook for a tool to tap into. Um, so if you look at any processor architecture, this is pretty basic stuff that, that uh, is provided. And then you need a way to control the deployment of your stack, uh, starting your stack, stopping where you need to, and continuing from where you start. Uh, then you need access to all the resources that you've seen and, and, and access to the log in some kind of control way. So once you have this kind of low-level you know, support, then you can even envision building a pretty basic command line kind of a debugger, something like a GDB. And so basically what you get here is a, a context on, on your file stack. And, and then with that, you it make it uh, nice and convenient for you to quickly you know, use simple command to, to kind of navigate around and, and manipulate your stack and start and stop and single step and so on. And so it's pretty basic stuff. And then going from there, you can envision building a you know, advanced tool uh, that we probably graphical that would in integrate everything from end to end for your development and your uh, your operation. Okay, uh, so for this, Eclipse could be a frame a good framework to to to, to use to build your tool, uh, and something like the the L stack can also be used to to allow you to interface to the, all the logs in your uh, L stack. Okay. Um, so next question there is, who is going to build this? Right? Well, at the heat engine level, all the low-level support, uh, that certainly that belongs to the heat engine. So that, uh, I think, uh, is the, uh, has to be a community effort. Um, the basic debugger, that could also be open source. Right? Could be some contribut contributor tool that you know, someone can write and, and contribute back to OpenStack and to heat. And for the advanced tool, um, we think this is where vendor can step in and provide a valid ad offering on top of OpenStack. And uh, so this is a, a good opportunity for you know, people to, 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 to get in. Right. Uh, 
this is it's a pretty nice good picture right and now where are we so what I'd like to do next is to show different elements of this picture that are emerging in Obasaki. And so maybe one day we can fill out the, the full picture. So, uh, so here I'm uh, showing a number of uh, low-level support that, that help with debugging, and in particular for the Juno release. Right. So first is a new feature. Uh, now you can update a fail stack. Okay. Um, uh, before Juno, you know, then once if you stack fail, then there's nothing you can do but to delete the stack and recreate. Uh, so, so with this feature, if you don't ro roll back your stack, then this is more or less e equivalent to continuing a fail stack. Right. So it's like one of the the, uh, the low level support that we mentioned earlier. So there's a many scenario when this is pretty really useful. Uh, you could have a very large stack that you know, would take a long time to recreate every time. Uh, you could have a long running stack, maybe something running in production, and maybe you, you know, do an update and then something fail. And so in that case, it's not, it's not nice to have to kill your stack and recreate it. Okay, another little feature that uh, help with debugging is uh, uh, so, so when you debug, you tend to repeat the same stack over and over again, and you tend to reuse the same parameter and so on. So this little feature allow is a new command line op option and. Uh, uh, API that let you basically reuse the, uh, the parameter that you've used previously. It would pull it out of the database in the in heap. And then finally, you can now uh, queue a stack in the middle of an update. If you run the update and look like it's in error, then you can just cancel it. Uh, so again, if you don't roll back your stack, then it allows you to get in and do some debugging and maybe potentially uh, resuming from there. Okay. Uh, here in this chart is a couple, a number of new blueprints. Uh, they're not implemented yet, but uh, uh, um, these are you know, potential new uh, features that provide the kind of low-level support that we mentioned earlier. So I won't go through all of them, uh, but I just want to make the point that uh, this, you can see this is pretty much really a, a community-wide effort. And I think the community does recognize the need for uh, you know, uh, supporting uh, Debugging in in heap templates. Okay. So now that we have like kind of laid out the the emerging uh, uh, element in OpenStack that help debugging, let me now pass on to my colleague Winnie here. Uh, Winnie will take you through a couple debugging scenario. Okay. Thank you, Winnie. Hi. Thanks, Tom. Um. um I will show uh, some typical technique most people are going to use to debug heat template on OpenStack Junior release. Let's take a closer look at my first uh, Bailey scenario. In this scenario, um, it's very simple. All it does is uh, create a NOAA server and then use the heat software config and the software deploy to config that uh, server. Let's take a look at the status of this stack. Um, I'm showing you here is uh, trying to check the stack from Horizon. And you can easily get to this page from going to a uh, project and then illustration and then stack on the left navigation. And then on the right side, it will show you all the uh, stack that is belonging to you in this project. And you can simply click on the name of the stack and you will get the detailed information of each stack. And the view I show you there is the um, under the resource tab. That's the uh, detailed resource list of that stack. So if you look closer down there, you see that the stack fail. Um, the server already created. Um, the configuration also set up already. However, when we deploy, and then you see it have an uh, error there. Or it says just it with an exit code 2. What does it mean? I'm not sure yet. But all I know is when I try to deploy this configuration, it fail. So the most logical place to look at probably will be try log to the VM and look at the system log file. Hopefully we can find some error message there to help us to figure out what's wrong there. So let's take a look at the uh, system log file. Try to look for the error message. And in there, I find this error message. It said that uh, when I try to run that heat configuration skip script that I sent in, it failed. And if you look a little bit further up there, it's complaining the very first line of my shell script. 
So I open my log file. I mean, not log file, the, the script file. I see that it's very simple, nothing wrong. So I'm thinking maybe I should try to just manually rerun it here and see what's going on. And I got the exact same fail error message that I see in the log file. That just tell me that's really some problem with my script file. So I open it again, look at it again, stare at it a little bit. Finally, I see what is my problem is um, the file is in DOS mode. And I'm trying to run it on a Linux machine. That's why it failed. Um, the reason I get to this is because I create this uh, file from a Windows machine, trans uh, SCP over it to a Linux machine, and I forgot to convert the format. So after I fix the file format, then I run the stack update from the command line, and here you see the um, update successful. So here I would like to point out I have used two new features that I have added to a junior release that Ton have mentioned before. The first is I'm able to run this stack update against a stack that is currently in fail state. Uh, for the previous release in Icehouse, if you've got a stack that failed, all you can do is just delete that whole stack and start all over again. But in this release, you can update it. Uh, the second feature I use is this little dash x uh, option which is allow you to reuse all the existing parameter that you previously defined for from your previous run. So you can reuse it. You don't need to retype everything again. Uh, or if you want to just change some of the parameter, all you need is have this dash x plus the uh, parameter value pair that you want to change. Then you can just change just those several parameters you want to change. So let's take a look at uh, my second scenario here. This is also a simple case. All it does is uh, create a NOAA instance and then a Cinder volume. Then it will try to attach the Cinder volume to that uh, server. It fell again. And uh, so here you see the NOAA server already created successfully. However, right, when I try to create the Cinder volume, we have problem. And all it said is unknown error. That's <laughs> another error that is not descriptive. Don't know exactly what is it. But um, since it fell, when I try to create the volume, so it's very logical to think, should look at the Cinder log file. That may give me some information about my failure. Um, before I get into the uh, Cinder log file, I'd like to point out is um, most regular user cannot access to your OpenStack system. So they, they will not be able to look at any of those Cinder log files. So um, it will be a little bit hard for, for a regular user to debug this uh, problem. Yeah, I know it's a simple case, I understand, but just think about a more complex case. Uh, so, okay, um, when I look at the Cinder log file, there's three uh, Cinder log it will provide one for API, one for scheduler, and one for the volume. Um, I find some error message and warning message under the uh, scheduler log file. I see one error and two warning message. Uh, in the error message, it mentioned there's no valid host was found. No way that a uh, host available, so it sounds like I cannot find a host to put my volume. When I look a little bit higher up there and I see the warning message here, it clearly tells me what's going on. It's insufficient free space for the volume and trying to create there. I request for 50 gigabyte while there's only 7 gigabyte available. So it's very simple to fix here. I have three solutions here. One is um, try to identify some unused volume on the system, delete it, so free up some space. Um, the second choice I have is uh, simply reduce the size of the volume within to that uh, available size and attach a smaller volume to the server. The third option I have is I can um, scale out the cinder node so I have more storage space. So in here I pick the simple way, which is just uh, simply reduce the size of the volume and then attach that to the server. And here you see it runs successfully. So here, um, I have shown you two scenarios, how I use uh, Horizon and command line to gather more information about the failure of the stack. And then I use my own experience to guide me through to identify what log file have potential to give me more information about the failure. A lot of time, um, it is hard to do. Th this is, I understand, it's very simple. It, everybody know where to go. But when you have a complex stack, then it will be harder to figure it out, what should you log, where are all those log files at. And uh, also, when the error message is not descriptive, it, it becomes a little bit more harder. And also, some log file is not available to all the user. So um, this kind of produces an uh, opportunity for a vendor to step in to 
build some tools that can help to ease this process. And I'm going to turn to Fabio, and he is going to talk about a high-level end-to-end advanced tool that will simplify this uh, debug process a bit. Thank you. All right, so uh, in this part of the presentation, uh, we're going to show you how uh, the end user could uh, troubleshoot failed hit stacks end-to-end from the perspective of a high-level uh, advanced tool. Uh, and this tool is um, IBM Urban Code Deploy with Patterns. Um, so remember the last scenario that Winnie showed us? So we're going to revisit that at this part of the talk from a different perspective. So uh, let me just say a few words about this uh, IBM Urban Code Deploy with Patterns uh, tool. Um, it's really a web-based development environment for, for hot templates. So uh, it provides you with both a graphical editor and a text editor. The user can easily drag uh, resources from the target cloud into the template that they are creating uh, and trigger the provisioning of the stack from there. It provides you with the typical features that you would, that you would expect in full-fledged uh, integrated development environments for traditional programming language, such as syntax checking as you edit your hot template. Uh, it also verifies whether or not the hit uh, types that the template references actually exist in the underlying uh, hit engine. It gives you warnings if you define a parameter in your template and you do not use the parameter anywhere else. So basically, all the typical features that you would expect in integrated development environments for, for programming languages. Um, so I don't know if you know, but this tool was presented at the OpenStack Summit in Atlanta uh, earlier this year. It was announced at around at that time. And it's being demonstrated here at the IBM booth. So uh, if you may want to stop by the booth and talk to our colleagues over there if you want to learn more about, about this tool. So what you're seeing here is a screenshot of, of uh, the, uh, this tool. You are seeing here the diagram view, which shows you a graphical representation of a hot template that's being created. Okay? So on the right, you see a number of pellets. Each pellet corresponds to a type of cloud resource. So for instance, images, network, storage, security groups, etc. You can drag those resources into your template, and those, those pellets are actually populated based on the content that are available, all the uh, resources that are available on your target cloud. You can switch between the diagram view and this, the source code view. Here's the actual code of uh, uh, the hot code corresponding to the previous graphical representation. You can switch back and forth, and the tool makes the experience very fluid when you go from one view to the other, OK? We're going to show a demo towards the end of, of the presentation. Uh, so OK, so we have a hot, uh, an, an editor for hot templates. Uh, how about troubleshooting? I haven't said anything about troubleshooting yet. So uh, in this regard, we have been experimenting with combining this, this web-based hot editor with an analytics service. Uh, and this service, we call it PDAS. It stands for Problem Determination as a Service. And it's really a service that's supposed to be installed, if you want it, alongside the, the IBM Uber Code Deploy with Parents tool. And it provides some UI extensions to the tool so that the results of the analytics performed on your failed stack can be shown right there in the, uh, uh, along with the um, web-based hot editor. So let me, let me give you a little bit more details about this analytics service. It leverages the trio uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana in order to collect logs from OpenStack hosts, parse them on the fly, extract semantic information out of the log events, and index them on Elasticsearch for future reference. In addition to that, the service has the ability to take snapshots of your cloud state at any point in time, uh, and also index uh, those snapshots for future uh, reference. So basically, those today, those two sources of information can be used to try and, and pinpoint suspicious events that are relevant to the context of the failed uh, hit stack. Okay. So when the end goal here is really to allow the end user to diagnose problems faster. Hopefully, that's the idea. OK, now uh, let's delve a little bit into the architecture of the service so that we can have a better idea of how it works uh, under the covers. So as I said, 
So each OpenStack host is instrumented with a log stash agent that is on the, on the fly, parsing log events, extract, extracting semantic information out of them, and sending those annotated events to the service. So we use a Redis uh, key value store as a buffer, and then a log stash indexer indexes those events into Elasticsearch. Uh, upon uh, answering to a REST call, the service can basically take a snapshot of the, of the cloud state at any point in time. And by state, I really mean the status of the various resources that are available in the cloud at that time. So what images are there? Uh, what is the metadata about those images? What uh, resource uh, uh, security groups have been defined? What are the security rules in each security group, etc.? cetera? Uh, when that happens, the cloud inspector will crawl your uh, OpenStack cloud state and index that to Elasticsearch as well through uh, our internal search engine. Okay? Now let's, uh, let's take a look at this in the context of the web-based hot editor. From the editor that I showed you before, the user can create the templates, uh, open templates that have been previously created, and then trigger the provisioning of a stack right from the tool. Now let's suppose that we provision a stack, and uh, OpenStack resources are being created as a result of that. And let's imagine that a failure happens right here at this point in your stack provisioning. So at this point, from the tool, the user can call to an analytics function that will, under the covers, uh, make the web-based hot editor talk to this analytics service and ask, hey, what's wrong with my stack provisioning? And the service will reply back with suspicious log events and cloud state <coughs> changes that the user should, should focus the attention on. Those events are rendered in a Kibana dashboard embedded into the tool itself. Now, the contents and the layout of this dashboard is customized based on that particular uh, stack failure. So that's the, the idea here. OK, let's take a look at that in action. I'm going to show a quick demo, revisiting the last scenario that Winnie walked through. So remember the Nova server and the storage volume? OK. So uh, you're seeing here the, uh, uh, the tool, Urban Code Public Patterns. You're seeing the graphical uh, diagram uh, of, uh, of a template that contains one image that's uh, uh, connected to a network called private. The name of the instance to be created from this image is going to be summit-vm. And as you can see here, we are requesting that a storage volume 12 gigabytes large be created and attached to this instance uh, when the stack is provisioned. Okay? Now, uh, if you switch to the source view, you see the hot code corresponding to that hot template. You can see the storage volume, the uh, volume attachment, the Nova server, everything is there. Now, let's provision a stack from this. So we click on provision and now we provide a name for our stack. Let's call it summit example uh, stack. And uh, here I'm providing values for the parameters that have been defined in the hot template. So I'm selecting one, of one, one key for this. So the values there are actually automatically populated based on what is in your target cloud. I'm selecting Fabio key. And I'm providing the default values for the other parameters. Click on provision. Now at this point, the tool is contacting the hit engine to create a stack. Let's take a look at the list of stacks shown by the tool. You see on the top there that our stack, uh, summit example stack, is being uh, created. The creation is in progress. Let's refresh this until this is done and see what happens. Now, you see that uh, there was a problem, there was a failure, uh, and the feedback that we got from the hit engine was uh, creation failed, unknown error. So let's take a look at Horizon to see if we can get more information about this. If uh, we switch to Horizon, you can see that the VM, Summit VM, was created and it's running and it's active. That's good. Now, if you look at the list of stacks from Horizon, you see that our stack, Summit example stack, uh, is in failed state. So, as we, not surprising, right? So, if we go back to the tool now, let's try and get more information that would help the user. Uh, diagnose this problem. So if you go back to the tool, and if you notice, 
uh, each row of the two corresponds to a stack that has been that is either uh, in uh, OK state or failed. And there, there are two actions there next to, uh, to the Twitch stack. One is to delete it, and the other one is to, is to perform analytics on it. So when the user clicks on that little icon there that I'm about to click on, this is going to basically uh, make the tool call out to the analytics service to try and get some useful information to help the user. That's what's going to happen under the covers here. So when what you should expect as a result is, if there is anything to show, then a Kibana dashboard is going to be embedded here in the tool with information that hopefully will be useful to the user. Okay? So we'll click on the analytics function, and now you see a Kibana dashboard right in the tool. Uh, what you're seeing here is, out of all OpenStack subsystems and all log files in all OpenStack hosts, the tool selected six uh, log events from Heat and 18 log events from Cinder. And you see that we detected six clusters of events uh, with the you know, yellow and green bars there. Each cluster contains basically three log events from Cinder and one log event from Heat. So this is uh, within the time interval during which that stack provision was taking place. As we're going to see later, each of those clusters corresponds to one attempt of the heat engine to create a storage volume and failing at it. Now, if we scroll down here, and let's take a look at the actual log events that were uh, returned, you see that uh, we have uh, the two decided to show the heat events in one table next to a table for the Cinder log events. And the events are uh, sorted by time. Uh, the, early, the earlier an event happens, the closer it is to the top of its corresponding table. Because typically, you know, uh, early log events are more strongly correlated with root causes than later ones. Now, if you look at the top event from the Cinder log events, let's take a look at that. Uh, you're going to see here all the semantic information that we have annotated with this. So we see the actual the path of the log file, where it came from. You see the um, actual OpenStack component that logged this. You see that was a Cinder scheduler log. Uh, you see more information about it. Now let's take a look at the actual log message. And you see the log message shows us that there was uh, insuffi insufficient free space for volume creation. It tells me that I requested 12 gigabytes, but there are, there's only 7 gigabytes available uh, to, fulfill, to fulfill the request. Uh, now, uh, let's take a look at the log events for heat. So each log event uh, corresponds to an attempt to create the, the storage volume and filling it. So basically, log events there are uh, Python stack traces uh, that were just, you know, failed attempts to create the, 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 the volume. So each event here corresponds to three events on the other table. They're, they're correlated by time. So, okay, so now let's, um, now that we have an idea of what the problem is, let's go back to the editor. So we, we switch back to the editor view. Let's fix the template and apply the change to the field stack. So what I'm doing now here is I am basically requesting the creation of I'm removing that 12 gigabyte volume from 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 the the instance and I'm going to request the creation of uh, a new volume and this time around let's make it uh, smaller. Okay, so let's give a name to the volume. Let's call it vol dash fixed and let's give it six gigabytes of size. Okay, now that we have saved this, let's uh, apply this template to the failed stack. Now here we are leveraging the new feature of the heat engine available in the June release that allows us to update a failed stack, as Tom mentioned to you before. We select here one of our stacks. That we select the summit example stack that failed. And uh, provide, again, values for the parameters of the template. And let's apply this to the failed stack. Now let's take a look at what's going on. Uh, on, on the heat engine. So let's take a look at the list of uh, stacks again. You see that the update of this stack is uh, in progress. Let's uh, refresh this until it's done. And now you see that uh, apparently the stack was successfully updated. Let's go to Horizon to double check things. 
if you go to Horizon, and if you look at the list of stacks, you see, let's take a look at the resource of our stack. So you see that uh, our stack went from failed state to complete, which is a good sign. Now, if you look at the resource and look at the volumes, you see that the vol dash fix that I have requested the creation for uh, is actually attached to the sum dash vm uh, uh, vm that was part of the template. So, with that, let's wrap up the talk with a few uh, final remarks. Uh, we have briefly talked about new capabilities of the hit engine some of which are available in the June release, some of which will come in future releases, that we see as basic building blocks for, for uh, sophisticated hot debuggers that could be written. We also showed you the integration between uh, IBM Urban Code Deploy with Patterns with an analytics service to provide end-to-end -end analytics to, to help users troubleshoot uh, hit stack failures. And uh, we see the integration of a hot debugger kind of approach and end-to-end -end analytics as you know, emerging elements for a more robust approach towards uh, troubleshooting hit uh, field stacks. Uh, as a follow-up on our talk, we may want to learn more about these blueprints of these new features uh, for the hit engine. And uh, if you want to, you can stop by our, our, our booth and uh, talk to our colleagues there to learn more about uh, IBM Urban Code Deploy with parents if you want. So uh, that's the end of our talk. Uh, if you have any questions, we would help to entertain them. Thank you for your time. OK, I'm planning to use the heat. Uh, should I wait for Juno, or can I use the Ice House version as well? Is it uh, in, um, does Juno have features that I would not mm, like to miss. Well, what do you what do you mm, what do you think? Is uh, Ice House heat ready? Like for or should I wait for Juno and for the releases for the features that I saw a lot of presentations about heat and they all were like Juno plus or Juno Juno based. So what about Ice House? Is it ready or not? Like the heat within. So uh, I'll I'll take a, a shot at it and then I'll pass okay. to Tone. So uh, as far as the capabilities of doing end-to-end -end analytics, uh, we are uh, agnostic to what hit engine is being used underneath. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, if you don't use Juno, you won't be able to update a failed stack. You have to basically delete it and start from scratch. So I'll let Tom elaborate more on the on the on the question. Right. Yeah, so th that's a key point. Uh, uh, Juno has that that very nice feature that that Zing put in, and, and then so right. Yeah, the other comment is that the as we move on, the the uh, the kind of validating validation and error, error message get better. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things we saw, like some of the error message you see in the horizon, uh, you know, used to be like a no error, but now it's yeah. getting better, like it's image. I wasn't going to comment on that. I had a question. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the question is, um, you're you're exposing the OpenStack logs to the kind of end user. Is there any? How do you ensure that the the user is not seeing stuff that they shouldn't yeah. see from you know other tenants or whatever in the logs? Right. So right now at this point in time, we don't filter anything, but the idea is to basically filter based on on the tenant. Uh, so if we have information about tenant specific logs that we can collect then we will not show anything that users should not see. But that's, uh, that's, the, that's where we are going. Yeah, it's a good, good question. Yeah, yeah, but I think th this is a, an area that we really need to, to address because uh, that, that's a security issue. Right? So mm -hmm. we want, want to make sure that you know, you're not, not picking at someone else's stack. Uh, right.
The other thing is uh, one direction that we're planning to uh, explore here is that um, in addition to have the ability to show the logs directly, we want, we want to try to extrapolate and based on the return suspicious events, we we'll try to give a higher level kind of idea of what the problem is rather than showing the log messages. This would be even more helpful. So if you don't show any logs at all, but you give the idea to the user, so hey, this problem looks like you know a problem of this type. Uh, so that's another direction that uh, would be interesting to pursue here. Any more questions? So again, so uh, the whatever capability is supported by the inline heat engine, the tool should uh, uh, easily leverage, uh, you know. This typically is installed in, in a separate host. And uh, the analytics service, uh, if it's used along with it, would be could be installed uh, in the same host as the tool itself or in a separate host. Right. So, uh, re re right. So, regarding plans, uh, I cannot uh, commit to anything here on stage, but uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But possible. All right. More questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.